Nous allons ici essayer Now de we're going to try and understand how we can undo the Gordian knot between the climate and development. Sounds simple. There will no, not be any climatic policy if we don't involve the developing countries, but developing countries will not participate in any policy if they feel that we're imposing additional constraints and obstacles on their development. In order to understand the stakes, I'd like you to look at this graph because it provides data on emissions per capita for the biggest countries in the world and the percentage versus the world population. There's the red line, theoretical, but it shows what the uh, per capita emission should be in 2050 so that we remain on track to stabilize CO2 concentration in the atmosphere at 450 ppm, uh, which is what we would need to remain below 2 degrees Celsius of global warming. According to this assumption, there would be a total budget and a convergence in the per capita level across the world. We're all familiar with the uh, efforts that must be made in the USA, but also in Germany, France, to decrease emissions. There's one detail that should draw our attention here. China and Brazil almost have reached the line and are even going to exceed the line. China already has. And they will import permits versus India. Just to exaggerate, I don't imagine that the political power in China would be prepared to pay taxes to pay so that their neighbor India can develop more. Therefore, we're in a dead end. If, if we think that we're going to be able to share the uh, emission effort, any cap and trade system implies compensatory payments between the South and North in excess of 1% of the GDP according to OECD figures for the next 40 years. So I don't believe that we'll be able to meet the uh, objective of uh, help for development. Southern countries will be more impacted than northern countries by the carbon price. Their economic development and takeoff depends very much on uh, Energy intensive uh, industries such as cement, steel, petrochemicals, and therefore the propagation effect depends very much on their production system. It's much a much greater price for them to pay than for us, and it depends very much on their exporting industries. It is going to bear on their exporting industries. Energy costs or higher energy costs will affect the income of uh, middle classes which are just about to emerge and will be their efforts will be thwarted by uh, higher energy prices. These obstacles can be overcome, but let us see what we can do to overcome them. Something can be done on the national level except that this might not be possible at a pace would be compatible with the political constraints. We can also talk about uh, tra compensatory uh, transfers between the North and the South, but I don't imagine countries like Germany or France or the USA transferring money to uh, countries where the population is uh, very numerous at a time when there is a, an economic power struggle and when we know, for instance, that the steel companies in France are actually held by uh, capitalists in India. Finally, even in developing countries, there would not be homogeneity. China very quickly would be forced to finance a country like India and some of the African countries. So the next question, after we have uh, taken stock of the situation, which is negative, why do we know that the uh, emerging countries want a climatic policy? Well, because they are fully aware of the danger. Deserts are expanding. The rainfall regimes are changing. 
uninhabitable areas are growing, areas where heat waves or temperatures are too high for people to live there. And countries like China or India are fully aware of the dangers and the uh, balance that will be necessary for peace to last throughout the 21st century because we know that access to fossil fuels has always been a cause for war. There is also urban pollution and the fact that innovation frontiers such with low carbon uh, energies would benefit to some countries which would become the leaders. They're aware that they are developing the essential part of their infrastructures over the next 20 to 30 years. And maybe they will turn, take a turn in a given direction. They understand that they will have to go towards a more inclusive development and reorient their infra political infrastructures. Otherwise, they will not be able to uh, offer the same type of development to their whole population. There are scenarios going in that direction. Scientists in those countries have thought that they might go towards a more inclusive development where there would no longer be a dichotomy between uh, urban areas and uh, rural areas, rich and poor people. But this means also that they have to adjust their policies uh, regarding infrastructures, uh, building, uh, construction, etc. Low carbon economy therefore would help them by reorienting national savings, which is usually uh, being invested in real estate or abroad, whereas that those savings should be in invested within the country and the uh, climate-oriented policy might contribute to that. So it means that in Cancun, the paradigm has changed. The idea adopted was that everybody should have access to low carbon economic policies for development to take place. Carbon prices of 50 or 60 euros are not going to slow down the urban dynamic in those countries. We need to do something early in order to change the way infrastructures are built. Even in the absence of uh, the price signal, something must be done to develop investment and also the fact that uh, we must share the responsibility and northern countries clearly have a responsibility that they must shoulder. They have committed to funding a uh, carbon green fund for the coming years. The fund comes from public funding it possi possibly will not be sufficient to help reorient all the countries, but at least it will be one step forward expected by all developing countries. In summary, developing countries are increasingly aware of the need to gain control over the climate changes, and while they wait for credible proposals from developed countries that could help them reorient the development. And their interests are not so divergent, and experience has shown that they can find, they can unite against the northern countries when they want the northern countries to make serious proposals.